The top job in Georgia politics is on the ballot. Governor Brian Kemp is seeking a second term. We are here because we have a lot more wood to chop. Former U.S. Senator David Perdue is trying to unseat him. I'm very, very concerned about our state. Both vying to become the Republican nominee for the general election in November. And I believe I'm the only one that can pull our party together and beat Stacey Abrams in the fall. We are in the fight for the soul of our state. Tonight, we're getting them on the record about the most important issues to Georgians. Live from the WSB TV studios in Midtown Atlanta, this is Georgia's Republican gubernatorial debate. Here's your moderator, Justin Farmer. Good evening, and thank you for joining us for this live debate in the Republican primary for George Governor. We are now just a month away from Election Day. There are five Republicans running in the primary for governor to qualify for our debate. A candidate needed to reach a 10% threshold in the average of seven independent polls. The candidates in our debate tonight meet that threshold. One candidate who did not is Candace Taylor. There is currently a small group of protesters outside of our studios calling for Taylor's inclusion. But again, she did not meet the polling threshold. Now, let's meet the candidates. Who did? Incumbent Georgia Governor Brian Kemp and former U.S. Senator from Georgia David Perdue. Gentlemen, thank you for being here and making yourselves available to Georgia's voters. Thank you. To question the candidates tonight, I'm joined by our panel, Channel 2 political reporter Richard Elliott, WSB Community and Public Affairs Director Condis Presley, Atlanta Journal-Constitution political reporter Greg Bluestein, and Univision political reporter Rafael Olivaria. Let's begin tonight with opening statements. Each candidate will have 90 seconds. We determine the order through a drawing, and first up, Senator Perdue. Well, thank you, Justin. First off, folks, let me be very clear tonight. The election in 2020 was rigged and stolen. All the madness we see from the Biden administration, two million illegals, rising gas prices, unbelievable inflation, the brink of war. All that started right here in Georgia when our governor caved and allowed radical Democrats to steal our election. And because of that, he has divided our party and cannot win. What you're going to see tonight, unfortunately, is an embattled governor, a career politician, 20-year career politician, who's going to parrot his political handlers to distract you away from the fact that he sold us out and cost us the majority of the United States Senate. I'm proud to have President Trump's endorsement. With your help, we will get this done. We will win. When my mom and dad raised me, and I worked my way through Georgia Tech, uh, I was proud to be from Georgia. I had a 40-year business career where I created thousands of, of good American jobs. What I want to tell you tonight is the only reason that I'm running is to try to save our state. What I'm worried about is that the woke left has entrenched themselves here. What we have to do right now is to make sure we get criminals off our streets, the woke mob off our, out of our schools, <coughs> eliminate the state income tax, and prosecute voter fraud. Together, we have to fight back. Governor again. Well, Justin, first of all, thank you for having me tonight. I want to thank the panelists and thank WSB for inviting us to be here. You know, when I ran in 2018, I made a very simple promise to the Georgia voters. I told them I would put them ahead of the status quo and the politically correct and put hard work in Georgians first. And I've done that. And you know, I was tired of politicians that would say one thing on the campaign trail, but do something else when they got in office or do nothing at all. So I promised you, if you'd elect me your governor, I'd do exactly what I campaigned on when I got in office. And that is exactly what I've done. As a father of three daughters and a husband, I believe now more than ever, we live in the greatest state in the country to live, work, and raise our families. Am I, am I, and I am honored to be serving as your 83rd governor. But also realize that we are in a fight for the soul of our state. And I want to promise you this tonight. If you will nominate me as your Republican nominee, I will work every single day, and so will Marty and the girls, to make sure that Stacey Abrams is never your governor or your next president. I have the record to do that, and I'm willing to put in the work to do it, and we will save our state from Stacey Abrams. So I'm honored to be here and look forward to your questions tonight. Gentlemen, again, we appreciate your being here. 
A quick overview of the rules this evening. Each candidate will have 90 seconds for responses, approximately 45 seconds for rebuttals. So let's get underway. Senator Purdue, first question to you, please. Uh, there hasn't been a significant intra-party challenge to an incumbent uh, governor in more than 70 years. And so you've addressed it before, but your response to those who say that you running uh, is just going to weaken the party as you're likely going to face the winner is likely going to face Democrat Stacey Abrams. Are you fracturing the party just by, by running? Well, last time I checked, Justin, we're in a democ democratic republic. That's what this is all about. We give people choices and that's what we're doing. I'm not dividing the party. The party was already divided. All last year, while our governor would not investigate anything, we were called and called and called. Why won't he investigate? He would not sign, he, he would not stop the consent decree that was signed. He would not give us a special session. In this past year, he's not investigated anything. As a matter of fact, if a Democrat was doing what he's doing now and suppressing information and not following up on leads and not really telling people in this state to investigate voter fraud, we wouldn't be divided. I'll tell you this, if he were a Democrat, even his strongest supporters would be calling this a gross corrupt cover-up. Well, first of all, I'm not going to let you call me corrupt like you let John Ossoff call you corrupt. <laughs> and your record and what you're saying is completely false. I have followed the law and the Constitution. You have a candidate that is going to attack my record, unfortunately, all night tonight, because they didn't have a record of their own to beat John Ossoff in 2020. They're also lying to you about the consent decree and other things that I didn't have anything to do with. And I'm looking forward to discussing that tonight uh, because, you know, the things that David is saying is absolutely not true. I'm the person, our lawyers invested hundreds of hours and referred a case to the state election board that has subpoena powers and does have the investigative authority uh, to do exactly what you're accusing me of. So, Governor Kemp, there has not been any evidence then or to date that has led you to believe that you should act. Is that, well, is that what you're saying? The, the jurisdiction, and look, I was Secretary of State for eight years, and I don't need to be lectured by someone that lost their last election about what our voting laws are and who has responsibilities for those in our state. I mean, I'm the guy that sued the Obama Justice Department so that we have a citizenship check when you register to vote. I'm the person that's been to court multiple times defending our voter ID laws. I'm the person that's been fighting back against Stacey Abrams and all these liberal groups that have sued us for years when no one was paying attention, including David Perdue. Uh, so the, the investigative authority, per the laws and the Constitution of this state in 2020, lies with the Secretary of State's office and the State Elections Board. Now, we have had things that have been given to our office that we've looked into, and when we thought they had merit, we referred them to the proper authorities to investigate because they're the ones that have subpoena powers. You know, thankfully this legislative session we passed legislation and we might move the money in the budget long before people started talking about this to allow GBI to start doing that and take the lead on elections investigations and I look forward to signing that bill soon. I'd, I'd like to rebuttal. Yes. Thank you, Justin. Well, first of all, the only reason I'm not in the United States Senate is because you caved in and gave the elections to Stacey, or to uh, the Liberal Democrats in 2020. I go back to the consent decree, Governor, and the fact that today, not one person in this state, forget about all that political double talk, not one person has been prosecuted. Tell me what we're doing to investigate what people are asking you to investigate today. We have evidence that's compelling. We have a, a, a court case right now, a civil court case, where the judge ruled that the evidence was compelling and actually ruled to unseal the ballots in Fulton County. And yet nothing has been done with it. We now have hard, indisputable evidence of ballot trafficking and ballot harvesting in this state, and you guys are not looking at it at all. The head of the GBI saw it a year ago, you saw it a year ago, and nothing's been done about that. What I come back to is this. You keep talking about it's somebody else's responsibility. You're the top cop in this state. It's your job to make sure that we prosecute voter fraud. And right now, you're telling the people of Georgia that not one person violated the law in voter fraud in 2020. Is that right? That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is we got information, some from one of your friends that sent it to us, and we actually did something about it, and we sent it to the Secretary of State. And what's office. been done about that? But you're talking about somebody that was a candidate on the ballot. 
that didn't even ask for a recount. They didn't go into the courtroom until they were a candidate for governor, well over a year after the election was over. And while we were passing the strongest Elections Integrity Act in the country, you were nowhere to be found weighing in on any of that. And the GBI has looked at this, but you know what? So has the FBI. And they haven't moved any further because they're asking for that one person that supposedly called in that knew about this so-called um, you know, operation, if it existed or not. I don't know whether it did, but if it did, we need that one person to investigate. The GBI put that in a letter. Nobody's given us the name of that person. Senator, uh, ten, just, 10 seconds yes, to wrap it up. Thank you. Well, first of all, that is not answering the question. Not one person, no matter who's doing this or who's supposed to be investigating, not one person has been uh, prosecuted for voter fraud after a year. Well, the and governor a half. is not a prosecutor, by the way. No, but you're the top person that can make yeah, sure. Yeah, but we have a constitution, and the attorney Excuse general is the top prosecutor in the state as long as, as well with the local district You know, attorney. that's what politicians do. It's somebody else's fault when it doesn't go right. But when no, something's David, going that's well, what the law you're doing, in the you're doing quite, is. you're quite it's ready what to the take law all the, and the constitution Governor, is. It's no. nice to see this. And leaders, weak leaders take credit when things go weak well. Weak leaders and blame people. You, they blame somebody else when it doesn't. Hey, weak leaders blame everybody else for their own loss instead of themselves. Gentlemen, thank you. We're going to get to our panel, please. And WSB TV political reporter, Richard Elliott. Uh, the first question is for both of the candidates, uh, and I'll start with you, Governor Kemp. As you said, there is a schism in the Georgia Republican Party right now. Uh, there is the David Schaefer, the, the chair of the party, pro-Trump wing, still talking about November 2020. Then there's uh, the Lieutenant Governor Jeff Duncan, GOP 2.0 wing. Which wing do you belong to? Do you feel you belong to? Let me start with you, Governor. Well, look, I belong to the wing of the voters. I mean, that is what my concern is, is making sure that we put hard work in Georgians first. I wake up every single morning determined to make sure that Stacey Abrams is never our governor or our next president. That is what drives me. It is what has driven our agenda. Uh, you know, I'm not, look, it's, it's fine that we're having a Republican primary fight. Like was said earlier, this is a free country. You know, anybody's got the money and it qualifies, they can sign up and run. I'm embracing that. I've been using it as an opportunity to talk about my record of doing exactly what I said I would do, going after street gangs. Marty Kemp leading the country, doing more than anybody at the state level to end human trafficking. Incredible economy in our states, creating tens of thousands of jobs for hardworking Georgians to recover from the pandemic, protecting lives and livelihoods. And that's what my focus is on because that is a record that will beat Stacey Abrams in November not looking in the rearview mirror. Senator Perdue? Well, first of all, uh, you know, I go back to, I stand for the truth. And right now, we've got the leaders, Republican leaders in our state are trying to bury that. They want to move on. Let's look forward. The problem with that is he still hasn't answered the question. He didn't use the power of his office to stop the caving in, even in the consent decree. He could have called a special session then. After we saw what happened in 2020 in November, he could have called a special session then to investigate what was happening and to stop it before we had the runoff. Before he certified, he owed the people of Georgia a full and thorough investigation. And yet to date, he still hasn't done that. And he's lied to the, Amer to the Georgia people about, oh, he doesn't have the constitutional authority to call a special session. He just called a special session last year for redistricting. Well, first of all, the only one lying here is you. And that is a fact. Did yeah, you call a special, I, I know, did you call a special no, session? Did, did you stop the consent decree, Governor? I didn't no, have anything didn't. to do with of the consent decree. Of course you decree. didn't. That's why you failed. You should have you stopped You were on the them. primary ballot after the consent decree was signed. You never said a word about well, of course it until I did. you lost of the election. Of course I did. When we were riding on the bus, Governor, when I was campaigning you for you, you to, in the runoff, you did not stop when I was campaigning decree. for you, you in the runoff, the did you ever decree. ask me about having a special Governor, session? Of course I did. No, you, you lied did about not. it. And you no, lied about no, it. And it was even not. proven you by Greg Bluestein's own book. How many times was... I don't care about some reporter's book. I care about the truth. Well, I care Answer about the, the truth question. Too, and you're lying did you right ever now. ask me the many times I was on the bus campaigning for you? In front of Who are the witnesses? witnesses? You bring them forward, just there like this. Your just, staff, my yeah. staff, and Kelly Leffler staff in Truist Park. Absolutely, we asked for a special session. You continue no, no. to lie about you, that. You said after it was politically expedient for do that that you wanted a special session after Why your campaign you? chief of staff told us you didn't. 
So no, you're flip-flopping on the issue. And look, I know you were in a tough political fight then, but the point is, you didn't answer the How question. You never asked me on like the bus, this, folks. He never asked me. I was on the campaign with him on the bus. I don't know how many times, how many events that my wife and my family were campaigning excuse for David me, I'd like to get involved and he in this. never, excuse Justin, me, you can have your time when I get done. I thought we had time He never here. asked me about a dang Wait. consent decree that I had nothing to do with. You know, Senator Perdue, former senator, doesn't understand how the laws and the Constitution of this state work. The reason I affirm the certification of the election is because the law says I shall. It doesn't say I may. The Secretary of State certifies the election after your local county boards do that. So you should, you know, really, David, I think you ought to be running for Secretary of State. Somebody should, because you sure didn't do it when you were there. Oh, you didn't yeah, let's it. talk about Excuse my me. record Excuse when we were Secretary of State. Absolutely. You're the one You're that was Secretary calling State. me, asking we to look had, into things when you were a candidate in 2014. You had no voter ID in 2016. When nine absentee ballots in DeKalb County in 2020 out of 136,000 were rejected because of bad signatures, Governor, nobody looked at that. In Fulton County, it was 10 out of 147,000. I went back and looked. In the 2016, when he was Secretary of State, the same rate of rejection. You guys have not been enforcing the voter ID law on absentee ballots ever, ever. But well, let me here. go back to this. You're denying the fact that you have the responsibility and the authority to call a special session to stop the consent decree. That's when this all did, all started. The absolute truth is this, that when they passed that consent decree, it invalidated all voter ID law. What it did, it changed and to or and allowed fraudulent ballots to be accepted into the race. Absolutely, that's what the consent decree did, and you allowed it to happen. Governor, if you'll address that specific well, topic, and then we'll move. You know, quite honestly, that's just factually not true. true. David Perdue didn't care about this issue until he got in the governor's well, wait, why race. Why is that not it, true? Why is that not true? His name, why is that not his true? name you have was never on a lawsuit after the election with all this information. Do you have authority you to call a special session? Do you have authority to stop the consent decree and call a special session? The way session? the law works is you have to go in front of a superior court judge after election is certified so do to that. get remedy. Do that. Why didn't you do it? You're the candidate. I didn't have the authority. Your name was on the ballot, I wasn't David. You I didn't have enough officer. guts to do I it then. You didn't really? have enough guts to ask for a recount when you were in the runoff because you were just playing the politics like you always do. You didn't so want to sign that consent decree. For you your had loss. your own You're lawyer trying to sign blame the consent everything decree because on you didn't want to fight Stacey Abrams, you. Governor. You didn't want to fight well, Stacey look, the Abrams. Georgia Thank vote, you. Fight Thank Stacey you. Abrams. I've been fighting Thank Stacey you. Abrams for over a decade. Gentlemen, thank you. Condis Presley with the next question, please. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Senator Perdue, you declared your candidacy saying that you don't think that the governor can defeat Stacey Abrams in November. Yet, as of today, you appear to trail him when it comes to fundraising. You appear to trail him in the polling. You did lose the last election, and he did defeat Stacey Abrams in the last election. What makes you the better choice for Georgia voters? Well, first of all, let's look at the facts. He barely beat Stacey Abrams in 18 when I helped him secure President Trump's endorsement, which he still today doesn't think helped him at all. I won that election in November of 2020 by 90,000 votes. That's more than twice the amount of votes that he won, almost 500,000 more votes than he got in 18. I did that because I brought the party together, regular Republicans, women in the suburbs, and Trump voters in 2020. What he's done is split the party by not enforcing the law and not fighting for us. That's what I heard all year. That's why I'm in this race. He hasn't fought for us. He's caved in to big bloke or woke corporations like Rivian to bring jobs to Georgia by investing several hundred thousand dollars, seven hundred million dollars of our taxpayer money to woke companies owned by George Soros instead of standing up and fighting against these uh, radical Democrats who took over our election. What I am probably trying to do right now is expose him as a weak leader, somebody that did not fight for us, and he's misleading the, the people of Georgia about what he did do and what he didn't do and what he couldn't do and what the Constitution said and all of this. I am clear on one thing. We're standing here right now, and after the election in 2020, not one person has been prosecuted. And that divides this party, and he's done nothing to solve that. If I could follow up, Senator, you have both bickered back and forth about what should have been done, who hasn't been prosecuted, who should have been prosecuted, who did this, who did that. What evidence, factual evidence, can you present to our viewers tonight that there was 
voter fraud Connie, should thank have you. been prosecuted. Thank you. I'm glad somebody asked that question finally because most people in the media have already assumed the close on that. There's a court case in Georgia right now brought by a group of women. These are voters in Georgia in Fulton County. You have evidence of fraudulent ballots, evidence of ballots that uh, were run redundantly. You have missing batches, 161 missing batches. He certified this election in Fulton County alone. They're missing 16,000 ballots. They didn't look at the signatures in Fulton County and DeKalb County where we already talked about the nefarious activity. But the most egregious to me is the fact that there were 36 errors on the Secretary of State's website that was not even looked at. He had sent one letter to the Secretary of State about one small piece of that. Just the first two were material and might have changed the outcome of the election. But the last thing, and this is the most visible right now, since May of last year, they have seen the evidence. He and the GBI head saw the evidence of ballot trafficking, ballot harvest. This is indisputable. It's corroborated by bank records, by testimony, by uh, video, and also by cell phone data. He's not only tried to suppress that, he's tried to cover it up, and he fought the individuals trying to bring this to light and get the truth. This is what I'm talking about. They double talk this all the time. Oh, it was a clean. He said it was a clean election. He denies anything. I didn't ever say happened. that. I have never said that. Ever. Our what, it, do you not tonight think it was a clean election? I've you never it said a, it was a clean election. The difference you're between you and me, Governor. Well, the difference you're, between you're, you and me. Excuse me. Up. I'm not done yet. The Will difference you between you and me is the fact that you think that John Ossoff and John Bi or, uh, uh, Biden won fair and square. That's the difference between the two of us. You're telling the people of Georgia that that's what the truth is, and you want us to swallow that and move on. Well, let me remind you, I can speak for myself, and that's not what I said. I've always said there's fraud in every election. And when I was Secretary what? of State, I went after it. Uh, I didn't say there wasn't problems in this election. Look, I was as frustrated as anybody else. That's why we passed the strongest election integrity act in the country, because a lot of things that were done by other people, like drop boxes being approved by the state board elections. I'm sure you're going to blame me for that later on. But the point is, a special session would have done nothing to solve this problem. The only way after an election is certified is for a candidate. That was David Perdue. He never put his name on a lawsuit until well over a year after the election. Four times you would have to ask yourself, true. why is that? And you know, he criticized me for the Rivian plant, tying it to George Soros. David, you're being just disingenuous with the voters of this state. It's a public company. Anybody can buy stock in it. If it had been around when you were in the United States Senate, you could have bought it when you were doing your other trades. But the reason he doesn't like this deal is because we're bringing 75 great paying jobs to rural parts of our state. It's going to be good for our economy. And he doesn't care about that. He spent his whole business career outsourcing jobs to China. That is what I have been fighting on. Do not believe and let him blame everybody else for his problems and his loss. It was because he didn't have a record. And because he doesn't, he's having to attack mine. And hopefully at some point during the debate tonight, maybe we could talk about records. Well, I'm sure you don't want to talk about the election anymore, but we're going to keep talking about it until you we answer the question. Every answer you, Senator, you haven't you answered the question yet. Senator, if you'd kindly have a rebuttal, and then we'll move on. Thank you, this. sir. Thank you, Justin. Well, first, let's talk about jobs. I mean, what you're doing is you're taking hundreds of millions of taxpayer dollars in Georgia and giving them to a company primarily owned by George Soros, a woke company who's going to bring their jobs to Georgia, and you crammed it down the throat of the local people in uh, that area. What you haven't told us yet is how many hundreds of millions of dollars get. We do know that your cronies got $125 million for 2,000 acres, almost $60,000 an acre. You have not yet today told us how much you're investing in Rivian. Would you tonight tell us how much of our taxpayer money you're investing in that? Well, look, I'm glad to talk about Rivian and all the jobs that we've created. We have had a record year the last two years in a row for economic development in our state. And I'm proud of that. And I'm proud of the deal we're working on. And you'll be glad to know the jobs tax credits that companies like Rivian, like Kia, like SK Battery get, they're in the statute. They're in the law. Nobody's been given anything. They earn that when they create those jobs. It brings that opportunity to those local communities. Also, you'll be glad to know that this deal was structured just like the Kia plant that Governor Sonny Perdue did back 15 years ago. And look how successful it's been and what a great transition it's been for the city of West Point. Same thing happened with Commerce Georgia when the SK battery plant was created there. Governor Deal announced that. Same structure 
for Rivian. So we've been consistent, but we're also proud, and you have moved jobs to China. Let me, let me ask you the question real Thank quick. You. I get one more response. He had an extra one there. First of all, this is an artificial way to create jobs. And the proof of that is that three states right now, Florida, Tennessee, and Texas, are eating our lunch. Tennessee and Texas are growing 35% faster than Georgia, Governor, because of this arbitrary, arbitrary way of, of creating jobs. The thing that those three states have in common is they don't have a state income tax. You've told the people in Georgia that's impossible. I want to bring the, the I want to get rid of the, the state income tax and help attract jobs here for the right reason, not buying them with hard-earned taxpayer dollars. All the double talk and the political speak you have, you brag about how you handle the economy in, the, in uh, COVID. But the truth of the matter, the National Bureau of Economic Research actually gave all, all governors a grade. And I want you to know, our governor got a C, whereas DeSantis got an A during that period of time. So this is not the economic boom that governor brags about. He takes credit for the economic growth that we've had. Four billion dollar surplus. He's talked about that as if it were his accomplishment. He's riding the wave of the Trump economic turnaround that was the best economic turnaround in U.S. history. All right. Well. With all due respect. Another one? He gets another one? Well, no, you, you <laughs> got one on top of me. You need to keep up with how the debate's flowing. I mean, look, we are returning over a billion dollars to the taxpayers of this state as we speak. Money that we didn't need because we budgeted conservatively and the economy's doing so great. We have the lowest unemployment rate of the 10 most populous states. By the way, one of those is Florida. So, like, you don't understand what you're talking about, David. All you've been concerned is... Uh, with in your career is moving jobs to China. And that is what you're trying to do. You're trying to distract from your record of that and talk about mine, because that's all you have to talk now, about. I have, have to, to say, I have to have one have more response on that. He has accused me several times Ten of seconds, taking please. jobs to China. Governor, you denied that two years ago when you were helping me run for Senate, and now you're saying it's the truth. Which is it? Were you lying then or are you lying tonight? I would just tell people to look at your own words and make up their mind for themselves. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question from AJC reporter Craig Lucian. Yeah, Governor, I'm switch gears a little bit. You're, you're about to sign into law an education measure known as the Divisive Concepts Law that seeks to direct how race is discussed in public school classrooms. So my question to you is, how should Georgia students be taught about slavery? How should they be taught about Reconstruction? And do you worry that a measure such as this will have a chilling effect on educators seeking to guide them about what to teach and what not to teach? Well, listen, I'm proud of my record on education. We've had a historic year this year, uh, but really, again, just fulfilling my promises of when I was running in 2018. A $5,000 teacher pay raise completed that Senator P or David Perdue called disgusting, by the way. Uh, we passed this piece of legislation to make sure that our kids are not going to be indoctrinated in our schools. I've never said we don't need to not teach race and not teach history, but it needs to be the facts, not somebody's ideology. And that's what we've done. We also passed a parental bill of rights this year uh, to make sure that there's transparency and our parents can be involved in their kids' classroom. Uh, we've uh, done a lot of other things to put uh, parents first as well on education, like taking the mask off of our kids and putting that to bed. So look, we have been fighting for educators and we've been fighting for parents. And we believe in Georgia that the parents know better than the government which is really how I've governed the whole time during COVID, with no vaccine mandates. We sued the, uh, the Biden presidency four or five different times in regards to that issue. And there's many other things that we can talk about, but I'm proud of my educational record, uh, and we're going to continue to do more in the second term. Senator, did you want to address that? Oh, yes. Greg, did you want each? Okay. I would love for Senator Drew. Yeah, I'd love to. Thank you, Greg. Yeah, I bet you'd like to stand on your record. You got a good solid C by that same Bureau of Economic Advisors uh, about uh, your handling of, of all this crisis, COVID and education. You keep bragging about teacher pay. What I said was ridiculous. You waited till the last minute when I got in the race to make this an election year issue for teacher pay. My mom and dad were school teachers. My wife's a school teacher. Of course I want to pay school teachers. The problem is they need more support than that. They need to make sure that the woke mob's not taking over the schools and you've left them high and dry. As a matter of fact, right now on your watch in Fulton County in, in the Atlanta public school system, George Soros is funding a program where with Stacey Abrams' help, they're teaching kids that voter ID is racist. Now, that's just improper in my mind. I call that indoctrination. History is proper. We want to teach history. We also want to teach the other fundamentals that actually create people that can go into the workforce. And this is where I think parents and teachers have to get together. Well, I've watched this my entire life. What's happened here now is we've let liberal school districts actually supersede the, right, the uh, power of the governor 
to, uh, to mask our kids, keep schools closed, and so forth. That's why he got a C. If I'd brought a C home to my fifth grade teacher mother, I wouldn't have been very, she wouldn't have been very happy with that. All right, going to take a brief break this evening and then continue our questions for the candidates. So keep it right here on Channel 2. We'll be back in 60 seconds.